welcome to the class so today we will be learning about a very important and a very basic dermatology topic and that is anatomy and physiology of the skin so the human skin is the largest organ of the body the weight is 4 to 5 kgs which is approximately 16 to 18 percent of the total body weight and the area is 1.6 to 1.7 meter squares the entire skin you can divide it into three layers okay the epidermis the dermis and the subcutaneous fat the epidermis is the superficial stratified squamous epithelium the dermis is the underlying connective tissue with a very important structure which we need to understand and that is the dermoepidermal junction which is separating the epidermis from the dermis and then comes the subcutaneous fat that is paniculus okay it is the paniculus which is consisting of fat lobules containing adipocytes and fat septae which are consisting of the fibrous tissue now attached within the fibrous skin are structures which are called as appendages these appendages they are also called as adenexae so what are the appendages it includes the hair follicle it includes the sweat gland it includes the sebaceous gland and also includes the erector pili muscle so you should know that the sebaceous gland it drains into the hair follicle so that is why it is called as the pilo sebaceous unit so pilo means hair and sebaceous is referring to the sebaceous gland so this is called as the pilo sebaceous unit and it includes the sweat glands the sweat glands are of two types in the skin the first is the apocrine gland and the next is the eccrine gland which the details about which we will be studying later so this is the cross section of the skin so this is a very broad diagram where you can see this structure which is the stratified squamous epithelium is the epidermis okay below that this entire structure is the dermis okay so this part is the epidermis and this part is the dermis okay now below the dermis comes the fat layer and that is the subcutaneous fatty layer okay now very importantly you should know what are the structures inside the dermis so here you can see this is the sweat gland this is the pilo sebaceous unit so this is your sebaceous gland and you can see that the hair follicle is attached to the sebaceous gland in fact the sebaceous gland is draining through the hair follicle and this is called as the pilo sebaceous unit also here you can appreciate that there is this erector pili muscle the muscle which gives you goose pimples okay so this muscle is called as the erector pili muscle and this erector pili muscle is attached to the bulge area of the hair follicle and it gets attached to the epidermis above okay so when this muscle contracts you get goose pimple okay that is pilo erection <clears throat> now let's go step by step let's first study the epidermis so epidermis is derived from the ectoderm okay it is derived from the ectoderm this is a very important mcq please remember epidermis is derived from the ectoderm the thickest epidermis is seen over the palms and the soles which is approximately 1.5 millimeters and the thinnest epidermis is over the eyelids which is less than 0.1 millimeters so what is the significance of knowing this if we know that the epidermis is thicker over the palms and the soles if we are dealing with something that is involving the palms and the soles we need to add something like a keratolytic so that the penetration of the active substance increases what is the significance that the epidermis is thinnest over the eyelid the significance is that if you have say supplied some nail polish that you are allergic to and if you know your hand gets applied to your eyelid that allergen can easily penetrate the thin epidermis of the eyelid and it can cause inflammation and uh, onset of allergic contact dermatitis there also if you are applying say a topical steroid in the periorbital area the skin there is quite thin so if you are going to apply a topical corticosteroid which is very potent 
uh, in the periorbital area definitely you are going to land up with complications like glaucoma and cataract right so the importance of knowing the thickness of the epidermis is significant to your therapeutic uh, implication of your uh, patient now cells of the epidermis are keratinocytes okay these are the original residents of the epidermis they are called as the keratinocytes and there are certain immigrants means immigrants means they were not originally present in the epidermis they migrated from somewhere else and then they came into the epidermis okay so these immigrants include the melanocytes the melanocytes they come from the neural crest we will be studying about them of, of course but you need to know that the melanocytes have come from the neural crest the langeran cells have come from the bone marrow okay and then comes the merkel cells the merkel cells said to have a dual origin some say that they have come from the epidermis they have evolved from the epidermis and some say that they have come from the bone marrow okay so <clears throat> please remember the cells of the epidermis they include the keratinocytes which are the original residents it includes the melanocytes the langeran cells and the merkel cells which are the immigrants so this is the structure of the epidermis this is a very very important diagram for you to remember okay now look at the various layers of the epidermis that you see here okay so this is the a nucleate and the most superficial layer of the epidermis which is called as the stratum corneum okay so this is your stratum corneum below the stratum uh, corneum comes a layer where you can see that the cells here they are slightly ovoid in shape right and you can see that they have these multiple granules within them so this is the granular layer and these granules which are present within the keratinocytes they are the keratohyaline granules so below the stratum corneum comes the stratum granulosum and below the stratum granulosum comes the stratum spinosum okay now here you can see the cells are larger if you compare the size of this cell of the granular layer versus this cell of the stratum spinosum this cell is a little larger as well as it is a little polygonal in shape right this is ovoid in shape this is polygonal in shape and what do you see here you can see that the cells are attached to each other via these spinous processes okay these are basically intercellular connections okay which are called as desmosomes right so these intercellular connections or the desmosomes they are seen as spines on hne stain when you look under a microscope okay so that is why it is also called as the spinous layer and the other name for this is prickle cell layer okay it's also called as the prickle cell layer okay and then comes the last layer of the epidermis which is a single layer of columnar cells which is the basal layer now the basal layer is also called as stratum germinativum okay it is also called as stratum germinativum why is it called as stratum germinativum because this is the layer which is going to give rise to the other layers of the epidermis okay so to revise the layers of the epidermis they include the stratum corneum which is consisting of a nucleate cells you can see that they do not have nuclei okay so it is an a nucleate layer below that comes the stratum granulosum where you see that the cells are having keratohyaline granules below that comes the stratum spinosum where you can see that there are desmosomes connecting the cells which is also called as the prickle cell layer and below that comes the last layer which is stratum germinativum or the basal cell layer which is going to be responsible for giving rise to the other layers of the epidermis so stratum basal we discussed stratum basal is the dividing layer consisting of columnar cells correct then comes the stratum spinosum which is the prickle cell layer and it is 
containing intercellular attachments which are called as desmosomes okay they are called as desmosomes and they are seen as spines on microscopy then comes the stratum granulosum which is the granular layer containing keratohyaline granules now very very important what is the significance of these keratohyaline granules these keratohyaline granules they secrete something called as lamellar bodies which are also called as odlin bodies and these odlin bodies they synthesize lipids okay what do these lipids do these lipids they act as glue okay so as to keep the cells of the stratum corneum together okay so the question that is asked is where are the odlin bodies present the odlin bodies are present in the the odlin bodies are present in the stratum granulosum okay that is something that you need to remember and these odlin bodies they synthesize lipids which get secreted outside the keratinocytes which acts as glue and these are absent in psoriasis and in ichthyosis vulgaris now this is very very important mcq here please remember that the odlin bodies the stratum granulosum is absent in psoriasis and in ichthyosis vulgaris and that is why they are very scaly conditions right the stratum corneum is the thickest layer of the epidermis so again this is an important mcq remember stratum corneum is the thickest layer of the epidermis it is a nucleate layer that means it does not have nuclei and it is responsible for the barrier function of the skin the palms and soles have an additional layer of the epidermis and that is called as the stratum lucidum okay that is called as the stratum lucidum this layer is actually made up of degenerated keratinocytes if someone asks you what is the malpighian layer malpighian layer is nothing but the spinous and the basal layers together you would call it as malpighian layer okay so spinous and basal layers together is comprising of the malpighian layer 